Well, good morning and welcome to Daylight with Dean number 310 on March 16th number <laughs> March 16th number <laughs> 2021. No. March 16th. No. There it is. It all sounds it all sounds good. It is March 16th of 2021. There you go. <laughs> I'm so grateful that you're here with me this morning. And it's time to enjoy our first sip of coffee together. I'm grateful for my friend Matt Tunstall that uh, was informing me of the benefits of coffee. And he sent me this yesterday um, related to coffee and your mental performance. It says the caffeine in coffee acts as a mild stimulant to the central nervous system. Studies have shown that depending on the level of intake Caffeine can help improve mental performance, especially in alertness, attention, and concentration. So not only do we have the benefits of coffee just being enjoyable to drink in the morning, depending on the level of intake, we have certified proof, scientific proof, that it actually <laughs> helps you Ooh, mentally. Um, that's why I don't like to talk before I have coffee in the morning, or that's why I start daylight with coffee to get all those mental gears turning and operating in the right direction. Uh, thank you, Matt, for that little bit of wisdom and, and uh, insight there. Really enjoyed that. Uh, missed you guys for the past few days, Saturday morning. Uh, it was my Saturday mornings have just crunched together with time. Um, I'm not getting up at five 30 in the morning on Saturday mornings. Like I used to, I can sleep in a little bit later. And, um, by the time I got up, it was time to get going for my men's group. And then the day just took off from there. Um, and it did take off. <laughs> Ending with my daughter and her soccer team had their annual Midnight Madness soccer experience at a large soccer venue, indoor soccer venue in the North Hills. And um, she had a game at uh, 11, 12.20 a.m. and 1 a.m. And I was told uh, in not very confusing terms a couple weeks ago or about a month, a couple months ago that I was going to this. I typically have avoided the Midnight Madness events because uh, I work on Sunday morning. So, um, well, this year, Midnight Madness decided to be on the weekend of the time change as well. So by the time I came home, and got into bed, it was 3.30 a.m. <laughs> and uh, so that was how my Saturday ended and my Sunday morning began. I crawled out of bed a few minutes after 8 on Sunday morning to make it down to the church by 9 <laughs> for our first service at 9.15. So um, that was... Uh, a delightful part of my weekend. I'm glad I got to see her play. It was a lot of fun. It was a very impressive event. Very, um, I think maybe the largest indoor structure I've ever been in. <laughs> a little tongue in cheek there, but it was enormous. It was like three full size soccer fields under one big dome in the North Hills. It was, it was crazy big. Um, but only, only a few people, only one guest per 
person was allowed. And so I was uh, Coach Smith. Uh, I was his brother for the night. And my wife was someone as well. They didn't actually check. So <laughs> there, we were able to socially distance just fine. So um, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, two for Mr. and Mrs. Smith, last call. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so that was my Saturday. And Sunday was my recovery day. <laughs> Recovered from all of that. And then Monday being my day off, uh, since it was Leslie and, uh, oh, so that's why Sunday morning I didn't get up early enough to film daylight because I could have stayed up for a couple more hours and just filmed it then, but decided to get a little sleep. And then yesterday morning being, uh, Leslie's, uh, day off, my daughter's day off. They didn't, teachers and students in New Kent didn't have school yesterday. So I, uh, had planned the morning off. I let my uh, gym at 6.30 know that I wasn't going to be there Monday because of that and because of the time change. So uh, I feel like I'm getting a little more used to the adjustment now. Um, this week is always challenging after uh, daylight savings time begins to get adjusted back to um, losing an hour of sleep. So we'll see how the rest of the week goes with that. So one of the uh, fun things we do whenever we all have a morning off, we make breakfast together. Uh, it's usually my world famous crepes my kids ask me to make or their mother's amazing French toast. Uh, but yesterday it was waffles. And I don't know if you have a waffle ma maker or not, but I have to tell you, our um, Krupp's brand waffle maker is our favorite waffle maker in the world because I don't know if you can see that but it's got the really deep deep pockets and for a family of six uh, this has served us well over the years as it did yesterday morning and um, my oldest daughter came over with my grandson and we shared great great waffles together so if you're waffly inclined and have a lot of mouths to feed, might I recommend or at least mention that we had great success with our, uh, our crops as well. Um, and then um, yesterday, Monday, my in-laws needed uh, to buy a couple things up at Lowe's. So Les and I took them up there and we decided to go into Aldi right across at the mills uh, to get a couple gallon of milk and a f gallons of milk and a few other things. And when we did, uh, walking down the aisle, I saw it for the first time in my life at, in an Aldi grocery store, I saw Jif peanut butter. Now, uh, there are a few things in our home that we do not go off brand with. Like we stick with the brand. Uh, with our peanut butter, it's Jif. <laughs> with our toilet paper, it's Charmin. <laughs> with our uh, cotton swabs, it's Q-tip. <laughs> um, we're we're pretty, pretty big sticklers on all three of those. Uh, and to find Aldi selling Jif was... Awesome. <laughs> so much so that I wanted to buy the whole box of eight of them because they're priced so well. Um, I'd never seen them there before. And my wife said, no. He said, you can buy two. <laughs> but not. Now, this is a this is a great size, Jeff. Anything bigger than this, I've bought bigger because I've always been about bigger. Anything bigger than this. I find that you get jelly and butter, and by the time you get down to the bottom, it gets pretty nasty. So for convenience sake, the smaller sizes uh, go well because they don't have a chance to get all the breadcrumbs and toast crumbs and all the stuff for, the, for those who double dip with their utensils in the GIF. Uh, so this was the perfect size 
uh, the perfect brand, and it was it it brought significant fun, lighthearted joy on a Monday afternoon. Um, so my Monday was delightful, spending it with my wife and uh, my daughters and my grandson and my in-laws. It was a very uh, joy-filled day. So it's Tuesday, back at it, and uh, we have a church uh, church board meeting this evening. We're going to be discussing um, things coming up this spring, and um, I look forward to that conversation uh, covering things about Easter and our events this summer, and uh, we are looking forward to um, the possibility of things um, kind of opening back up for us. We will see. We love leaning into the wisdom that our council members uh, bring, so we'll keep you posted on, uh, on that. I mean, our church has been open but we've shut down our events um, pretty much all last year. So we're going to process through where we think we need to be with all of those. So looking forward to those conversations. So pray that the Lord gives us wisdom and uh, that we make wise decisions uh, when, it comes, when it comes to that. <clears throat> On a... Um, on a disappointing note, <laughs> I got a call Saturday um, morning or afternoon, I think Saturday afternoon from my uh, the secretary. She she said, Dean, she goes, I got some bad news. And I'm like, oh, what could it be? And she said the neighbor called and the kids behind the church playing at the basketball court. Uh, we put in two basketball I always grew up calling them basketball goals. Um, I think I've told that story here on Daylight. Seventh, seventh birthday, I got a basketball hoop for my birthday, and the box on it said basketball goal. And so I've always called it basketball goal, although that's not a common phrase <laughs> you hear around here. Um, but, um, we bought two basketball goals, um, probably 10 years ago and put them in the back and they're the goal real, uh, the real high end basketball, um, goals that we bought at Dick's Sporting Good. Uh, we got them on clearance, um, floor models they were, uh, removing and very grateful for that. Um, and they've served us well. well. I got a call that the neighbor said kids were throwing rocks at the tempered glass backboard and they shattered it. <laughs> so that was, that was disappointing. <laughs> and, and I'm certain, I'm certain I did things that made no sense when I was a young kid as well. I am certain of it. But as an adult, it is now hard to fathom how when a church puts in basketball hoops behind the church on a flat surface in western Pennsylvania for all to enjoy. It's just it's just hard to imagine how or what kind of thinking would go in kids' minds to choose to throw rocks at it until it breaks. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, the second, the second jarring thing that, uh, occurred that I thought was interesting was my friend, um, owned a, a used car dealership here in New Kensington. And he had a car on his lot that was, um, it was a 1980, 1980. Yeah, it was a 40 year old Mercedes that was a beautiful four-door sedan. And it, he reminds me that back in 1980, the car cost $68,000. And uh, his uh, 
the business is closed, but he still owns the property and the car has sat there for um, the past couple years. It's been on my radar for about three years and I've asked him about it a number of times and he's like, I'm getting the title. Uh, there was some confusion about the mileage, sending it into Harrisburg, getting that worked out. With the pandemic and everything, nothing's uh, nothing's transpired with that. And so uh, every time I drive by, and I drive by it almost daily, I look at it and like one day, one day, and you know, it would just be a couple thousand dollars for the car um, in the condition that it was in. But um, I, I thought that that would be a cool car. That would be a cool car. And um, so. <laughs> Yesterday, I drove by and the car was gone. Now, my friend had promised me that he would keep me posted on the title and this and that, and the car was gone. It was like the only car out front, so it was gone. So I called him and he said, yes, my wife noticed that the other day and uh, it disappeared. <laughs> It disappeared. It disappeared. I said, you mean somebody stole it? He goes, well, somebody had to have. He said, I have the keys. I have the title. <laughs> there's, there's, it just vanished. He said, they had to have come with the tow truck. Good grief. Good grief. So... Uh, found that to be rather fascinating. So um, he said, you know, they can't do anything with it unless they tear it apart and sell it for parts, but it was, it was a beautiful car. It was beautiful. So we will, we will see how that, um, that trans what <laughs> takes place there. So that was my extended weekend. Uh, it's Tuesday. Uh, looking forward to heading to the gym. I hope that you uh, have a great week planned. Uh, I got to tell you, I really enjoyed the um, service on Sunday in person. We had a lot of people um, still socially distancing. No fear of that uh, being an issue. But it was, um, it was a great message, great time together talked about the kingdom of God and living in this kingdom and living with the values of the kingdom and our allegiance and our citizenships being transferred to the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God here on earth. And so it, uh, it was a, it was a, it was a really enjoyable, really enjoyable Sunday. So, um, I hope that you've been able to catch it, and I hope that today um, you choose to live fully aware, if you're a follower of Christ, fully aware of your citizenship in the kingdom of God here on earth, and that you and I will choose to live <laughs> those values in every decision, in every relationship, and um, if you want to know what those values look like, I want to invite you to read James chapter 1 through 5, <laughs> Romans chapter 12, 1 Corinthians 13, Galatians 5, uh, the Gospels, every parable Jesus tells and says, the kingdom of heaven is like this. And he tells a story and then you get to sit with that story and unpack it and pull out the values uh, of the kingdom of heaven. And I hope that sorry about that one. Uh, that was a sneeze, not a cough. <laughs> I hope that you not only are a resident of the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God here on earth, but that you become an advocate for it, an advancer of it, and that you invite as many people to experience the goodness and blessings of the kingdom of God here on earth as you can. Well, guys, uh, great to be with you. I'm going to head to the gym now. 
first day back since Friday, so pray that everything goes well. <laughs> and uh, great to be with you this morning. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to pause as we begin our day this morning to invite you to do our day with us. Lord, may we be aware of your presence, of your love, of your justice, of your mercy, of your wisdom and your faithfulness and trustworthiness throughout the day. I pray, Lord, that we'll lean into you for guidance and wisdom and strength. I pray that we'll trust that you are a good God and that you can be trusted with our lives. Moment by moment, day by day, year by year, and not just our eternity, but our everyday life. Thank you for the life that you came to give and how it begins now, not just after we leave this earth. We're so grateful for life in all of its fullness and the gift of life in and through you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, guys, great to be with you. Can't wait till I get to see you tomorrow. Have a great day.